We have to talk about this, which I've kind of missed out on talking about and I've kind of waited a bit too long about it, but let's cover it anyway because it's a podcast regarding Edward Inninfo. Um Unfortunately, Uncle Edward has been somewhat ousted um, from British Vogue. Um, he's obviously taken a step down, but you know how fashion stuff is. Usually when people have these sort of jobs, they're usually jobs for life. They're usually amazingly amazing jobs that kind of, you know... Um, for somebody with a passion for fashion, somebody who's been in, working in industry for a long time, you usually don't leave these jobs if you don't really have to, or you get kind of pushed into a corner to leave. So most likely it's a combination of many things that probably led to Uncle Edward having to step down from his role as editor at British Vogue. One of the reasons out there could be that he was allegedly gunning for Anna Wintour's role um, overall, right, as the kind of de facto head B-I-T-C-H um, at Vogue overall. And um, to kind of obviously lead and spearhead what you know they're doing over there in Vogue US but um, Anna Winter seems to be a very formidable foe she doesn't relinquish power or control very easily and we should have known anyway when the whole George Floyd thing happened RIP to him and the unfortunate kind of protest that kind of you know subsequent protests that happened also people got injured and fucked up and shit and there was a real conversation that was being had about representation um, about inclusivity about diversity and people were really basically putting it on these corporations saying hey enough is enough we want to be included and some corporations buckled and bent some people tried to just kind of put a band-aid over it and appease people by putting up black squares and other folk like Anna Wintour didn't budge nothing really changed in the grand scheme of things even when all the bon appetit shit happened nothing really changed um so we should have probably knew from then on that anna winter wasn't about to let edward come in uncle edward sorry come in and try to take away any of her flipping prestige or ouster in any meaningful way especially under the guise of diversity and inclusivity she's just not having it in that regard um but it's courtesy of sky news read the article it says edward Innerfall stepping down as editor of british vogue after six years and in full, um, the first and man, man, the first man and black person to do the job revealed the news in an internal memo on Friday. He told staff that he was excited to be taking his new role as editorial advisor of British Vogue and a global creative and culture advisor of Vogue. That sounds like the most like fluffy. Let's give you a let's give you a title so you don't step away completely, and it doesn't look bad on us as the optics of us firing the only fucking man and black person ever to fucking spearhead you know, um you know British Vogue. That kind of was what it kind of sounds like. So she's still gonna get a salary, so that's pretty awesome. But it, it it is just kind of to appease and to make sure the optics are right, which is awful, really, to be honest, because it shows how far we still have to go that this is still a thing happening, especially somebody like a person like uncle edward he's got a cv that's legit from the days that id and all, all sorts of stuff in between styling and whatnot like this is somebody that's been in the industry for a very 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 long time like you know somewhat seen childhood friends with fucking naomi campbell that's how long he's been around and still he's getting treated like this or getting put in a position where he has to quit like this <laughs> Um, Vogue covers are still unique in each country, but instead, content shoots and interviews have been used in multiple magazines in recent years. The 51 year old will report to US Vogue editor Anna Winter, who is also chief content officer of Condé Nas, and who NFO said part of the decision for him to play a broader role in enhancing Vogue globally. NFO already oversees Vogue France, Italy, Germany, and Spain. Recruitment for his replacement will begin immediately, but his successor will no longer be editor in chief, carrying the job title of head of content instead. Head of editorial content. That definitely shows a shift in what they're doing over there in Vogue, isn't it? Um, that it's now going to be not editor-in-chief, which is the coveted title. It's going to be head of editorial content. It sounds like a title you'd get working at fucking Vice or BuzzFeed, isn't it? Fucking hell. Enin Four, who was born in Ghana before immigrating to London, has been praised for his promoting of diversity. Under his leadership, cover stars have included pop stars like Rihanna, environmental campaigner Greta Thunberg, and English footballer Marcus Rashford. So, let's continue because... The actual tea on this is probably the funnest and most interesting part of this whole entire story because it goes to show that sometimes, especially when you're working in places like fashion, you really have to mind your P's and Q's and choose your opponent very carefully because some of these folks who have been in these jobs forever and ever and ever are not letting go, are not dying anytime soon also, not to be macabre or whatnot. Um, they you know they're gonna hold on to their job for dear life and if you try to step if you try to what's that what's that term if you if you come for the king you better not miss if you come for the queen in this case you best not miss because if you do miss you're gonna be you know looking around thinking shit where's my job so this is taken from 
um uh, i think article from time magazine no it's not, i think from the time sorry so big up this person who uploaded it um twitter user called prada maniac oh sorry prada manic check them out on twitter if you want to read the whole thing yourself but this is a screenshot of an article that basically you know uh tells the story from behind the scenes of what actually happened and the kind of you know the house of cars the game of thrones issues that are going on behind the scenes that led to uncle edward deciding to step down from his royal british vogue so let's read this little clip here that they have uploaded so it says when edward Edinfo emailed his staff on friday night he put a brave face on it he was stepping down as editor-in-chief of British Vogue, he wrote. Next year, he would be taking a global advisory position at the magazine, which would give him the freedom to take the broader creative projects. The title was nebul nebulous, sorry, but the meaning was clear. The never-ending game of Thrones at Vogue House had turned spectacularly against him. His predecessor, Alexander Shulman, had been on the throne for 25 years after only six, ending four was out. Um, it's funny because I think Alexander Shulman must have said something about him as well, so it's really strange. But one thing I really noticed was funny, right? Ran one random time talking about Vogue House. One random time, the headquarters of fucking Vogue and shit in Central London. A random random time, I was cycling around Central when I used to have my twenty six inch BMX. Big up my fucking charge stove wherever you are. Someone stole it, but R I P to you. I miss you every single day. I was cycling around on my charge stove. I was kind of feeling tired, wanting to be posted up, checking you know out the streets, people watching, seeing if I could catch some fucking big booty gals walking down the street and stuff, just enjoying my time in Central London. And I guess by my luck and i had no idea where i was i must have been standing right outside the fucking vogue house and this the open my bike like just chilling and at the same time i was standing there chilling with my bike the fucking fire alarm went off inside so everybody kind of walked out and i remember thinking looking at the building thinking oh shit that's, that's the place where fucking vogue magazine is and then everybody was walking out of the fucking building and the first thing that struck me when i was looking i was like wow a lot of girls and i was like shit there's a lot of white people in there, isn't it? And it was just like white person after white person after white person after white person. Don't get me wrong. This is a few years ago. It's not recently. I'm sure they've done a lot of fucking diversity hires and shit and a lot of kind of, you know, magazine affirmative action. But I just remember just thinking, wow, I didn't know this magazine was so white. Like it was actually surprising to me. Um, and it was also funny because it was like a certain type of white person. Like who's the example I could use? Like um, that Boris Johnson's daughter woman, who I think she does something for Show Studio, I think, or maybe someone else. I don't know what she does, but that that kind of type of person, right? Um, you know, they grow up in a certain area, maybe speak a certain way. Like, but you just know the type of white person I mean. I was like, right, you don't you don't even have white people from ends or from like up north. It's like a particular type of like you know london elite type of person who maybe went to a private school somewhere in switzerland or somewhere here kind of flooding out of Vogue house so in that instance if that's the case you know uncle edward didn't stand a chance if you're trying to you know go for the top spot with anna winter it continues here it says his appointment in 2017 caused surprise in some quarters and delight in others the first black gay man to get the job he had made his name as a stylist working at some of the edgiest and coolest magazine including id one of the best magazines in the world even though it's kind of fallen off recently i fucking still love it it continues arena um uncle edward was the man rihanna and beyonce trusted to make them look good beyonce invited him around her house for dinner to discuss ideas for a cover shoot and when rihanna appeared on the cover she did it with her baby son he met naomi campbell when they were both starting out in their teens and she was by his side when we went to the buckingham palace when he went buckingham Palace, sorry 2016 to collect his obe an award of which he's been hugely proud we connect on so many levels she said kate moss was one of the close friends and a-listers who were there last february when he married his partner alec in an orangery at the longleat house which um shant what's that which uh who's Chatelaine. Chatelaine is another close friend. Emma Tyne, the first black marchioness of Bath. It continues. Edward Edinfo's watch. Um, Vogue featured a transgender model the first time. And in another first, a man on the cover, the actor Timothy Chamelet. The Duchess of Sussex agreed to guest edit the magazine in her brief time in the UK before Megxit. Um, two years after, her sister-in-law Kate Middleton appeared on the cover. Meghan declined on the grounds that it would look boastful. Instead, her cover featured pictures of women who Meghan considered to be inspirational forces of change. And a mirror that was, Meghan explained, designed to show that you the reader were also a force for change in n4 recently published a memoir a visible man i actually need to read that in which he charted his journey from being a son of a poor Ghanaian immigrants his mother was a seamstress so he grew up helping her to make clothes 
Um, I knew how to construct outfits. I knew how to sketch. I knew how to costume, he wrote. But I could never imagine it as a career. He was scouted as a model in London Underground by a fashion stylist and became assistant to the photographer, Nick um, Knight, who'd probably like to be called an image maker or something, right? He like, hates the term photography. <laughs> like, what do you call it? Like, image making or fucking, I don't know, something he kind of makes up. But anyway, continue. Um, he spent 20 years as a fashion director at ID. He was hired by Anna Winter in 2006 to work at American Vogue. From there, he moved sideways to another Condé Nast title, W, before landing in Hanover Square in 2017 as the editor of British Vogue. But this comes here comes the beauty, the actual juicy parts towards the end here, right? This is the juicy parts of what happened behind the scenes. His takeover from Shawman was bitter. Unpleasant rumors began to circulate that Vogue House was understaffed, uh, overstaffed by posh white girls. See, I told you, right? I told you. When I was there, honestly, I saw fucking scores of them coming out of that fucking place bare made in chelsea type of looking girls anyway it continues when i interviewed a formidable shawman years ago in her immaculate white corner office all i remember of the editorial team was the absolute silence you could have heard a pin drop an exodus of her staff duly ensued when any took over including fashion editor shawman um, if we're in the fashion editor shawman wrote a piece for the business of fashion website about what makes a great editor and concluded that the somewhat point observation that it is not a job for somebody who does doesn't wish to put in the hours and who thinks the main part of the job is being photographed with a series of designers clothes in a roster of famous friends yo that is catty that is fucking catty you know she was sending fucking not so show or sh not so subtle shots at fucking uncle edward so imagine how much of an uphill task he had. Not only was he trying to oust Anna Wintour, he also had to contest with the person Anna Wintour let go to him to get the job, was also giving him shots on the way out. So crazy. He continues, under NFL Vogue put diversity and inclusion at his heart. Some complained that the readability fell by the wayside with NFL's interest apparently lying more in styling than editing. Advertisers loved it. And although some of his colleagues and employees were soon referring to him as Queen Mother, the Sunday Times reported because of his alleged diva-like behavior. Now for me... One of the things that kind of was a little bit, you know, annoying about um, Uncle Edward's tenure at Vogue was the insistence of diversity. Like, everything had to be diversity and inclusion. I personally think he could have done that um, by by default and also concentrating on making it a good magazine making it actually readable um because he did that obviously with the stuff that he did at id id is a good example of it right id's always been a champion of kind of platforming and promoting the freaks and the weirdos out there but it doesn't do it heavy-handedly it's just part of its dna same thing could be said for like the face and shit so i think he could have done the same thing at british vogue without it being so heavy-handed and obvious that's my only kind of critique when it comes to that sort of stuff we continue say what you like about alex shawman and her posh girls but she managed to keep the office egos in check one fashion insider said under edward has been an absolute diva fest fashion pr's report a return of abfab bad behavior from staff members jostling for front row seats to tantrums thrown in exotic locations because the menu did not comply with esoteric dietary requirements i think that's fucking bullshit whoever's saying this is a fucking hater or most likely doesn't like black people because if you're telling me all of those fucking old white people that are working at fucking vogue house for decades and decades have you know somehow uncle edward and his crew of people had worse egos than them i don't believe it i'm sorry i don't believe it those other people before that he replaced were incredibly entitled they had jobs for fucking life essentially um and they were probably worse than anything i would ever hear about uncle edward i'm not buying that in the slightest that's just like someone trying to besmirch his name for the sake of this narrative anyway it continues there are even rumors that several edinfalls wealthy and well-known friends try to get their flights and accommodation sponsored by the fashion brands instead of paying out their own pocket that's not really something to mention that's no point of mentioning it that is just something that happens all the time if if you're a celebrity and somebody of note you're gonna try your luck there's a story going around at the moment of some influence i don't know what who they are um exactly but they are very well known clearly and they got invited to a louis vuitton show but they i think they were in Cannes or somewhere or monaco and they requested louis vuitton to fly them over there for the show um in a helicopter and louis vuitton refused so they didn't go so that happens often i'm assuming why not if you if they're already giving you an outfit if they're already paying you a fee why not just try and chance it and see if they're gonna charter a jet for you book you a fucking helicopter get you a limo why not worth a punt but i don't think that means that that shouldn't reflect badly on uncle edward in my opinion it continues from the start there were rumors that the real queen of condon that's anna winter didn't think enemful was qualified for the job 
For his part, Enninfor made no secret of the fact that he coveted hers. He viewed British Vogue as a, as a momentary stop on his way to ultimately become editor of US Vogue, the most important job in fashion. But of course, we know that didn't happen. It continues here. One more little bit here before we leave. Let me just show you here. Whoops, go back to the fucking post. Um, what, some more juicy bits here. I think we read that. Da -da -da -da. Here we go. Here's some other bits here. It says, he did not believe he would have to play the second fiddle for much longer to a 70-something woman. A confident told um, John Aldridge on Sunday Times. He was wrong, <laughs> definitely. Because Anna Wintour that is not letting go of that fight. Five years ago in 2018, Vogue was forced to deny that there was a growing rift between him and Wintour, with NFL reportedly in tears because Wintour sat next to Queen Elizabeth at the Fashion Week, uh, London Fashion Week, sorry. He made a point of hosting separate British Vogue parties, and when the New York Times asked to interview him with Wintour, he declined. He and Wintour clashed over the editorial um, content of British Vogue, with Wintour putting her foot down when he wanted to make the magazine gender neutral. <laughs> Wintour would say, don't listen to Edward, a virgin's I said and he would say don't listen to Anna last September when asked on Vogue's video series 73 questions what she thought she would do be doing with her life if she weren't an editor-in-chief she said conflict negotiation mm. ultimately it seems that NF4 may have overplayed his hand the Mail on Sunday reported yesterday that he threatened to resign last year unless he was given her job Jesus, that's a bit much, isn't it? Winter retention of the throne was not inevitable. Um, she had apologised in 2020 for the lack of diversity in her staff in the magazine. She, she apologised. Nothing actually changed her. She played that one like a fucking G, to be honest. Um, she gave some people fluffy titles that don't actually mean anything but basically nothing really changed i want to say plainly that i know vogue has not found enough ways to elevate and give space to black editors writers and photographers designers and other creators she wrote in an internal email we have made mistakes to publishing images on stories that have been hurtful and intolerant some black journalists who have worked with anna winter said her apology was a cynical ploy in response to black lives matter protests of course it was um it continues just as either way nuclear um, Wintour prevailed, accepting the inevitable. Info attempted to shut down the rumors last year that he wanted her job. Ten CNN point blank, I don't want Anna's job. Pressed on whether he would take the role if offered, he replied, "I would say not right now, not today. I've realized that my strength in my creativity, creating images and contributing to that world, his future at British Vogue, he said, was being worked out. There is still an option." of him obviously there's still a possibility he could take Anna's job in the long term but for now he's definitely been put to one side so that she could do what she does best it looks like um it continues last bit here it says Edward shot for the moon and lost a friend told Sunday Times and so will go back to his first love which is being a stylist he has told friends that he can make a lot of more money at, than Condé Nast doing that and has long been frustrated with having to turn down lucrative consultors consultancies because of the perceived conflict of interest which is really stupid isn't it why can't an editor-in-chief of you know of fucking British Vogue also do fucking consultancy on the side it's going to one 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 is going to inform the other it's actually going to add to the overall quality of their work they do on the main magazine by keeping those creative juices flowing and shit it's really really stupid they don't let people do that to be fair um, whether money will compensate for not getting the job he is so obviously coveted remains to be seen maybe one day he'll stage a comeback and if when Winter steps down perhaps Winterfall will take will head in triumph to New York for the time being he goes to the Met Gala. It will be as a guest like anyone else, not the host. With the brands, including Apple, rumored to be lining up for him for a big budget projects, he'll be crying all the way to the bank. So clearly, Ed Uncle Edward's going to be fine, but that gives you some background on what's been happening, the kind of Game of Thrones issues, the House of Cards beef behind the scenes, the almost succession-like fucking drama that's been occurring behind the scenes between Uncle Edward and Anna Wintour over there at Vogue. He's now out doing his own thing. Got some roles in there coming probably. And I'm eager to see what he does next because the guy is an absolute talent, um, an absolute icon. And I can't wait to see what he has coming up going forward. So all more power to Uncle Edward.